In this video, I want to talk about two stage least squares, but in the situation whereby we have multiple explanatory endogenous variables in our model. So the idea is that we have some sort of structural equation, which is y is equal to alpha plus beta one x one plus beta two times x two, where x one and x two are endogenous. And then we have a couple of exogenous variables, z1 and z2, as well as the error epsilon. So the idea here is that x1 and x2 are correlated with the error, whereas there's no correlation between the error and z1 and z2. So what you might think that we can do in this situation is that we can just use, as we always do, z1 as an instrument for z1, z2 as an instrument for z2, and then if we were to find some further instrument, so Z3, we could then use it for both X1 and for X2. But it turns out that this isn't actually adequate. We need more variation than is provided by just one instrumental variable. So the idea is that we'd hopefully look to find an instrument Z4, which we could include in both of the sort of first stage regressions because now because we've got two endogenous explanatory variables we're going to have two regressions or two reduced forms as our first stage regression. So the idea here is that our first stage looks something like this. The first first stage regression is a regression of x1 on first of all we're going to have our two exogenous variables so we're going to have delta 1 times z1 plus delta 2 times z2 and then we're going to include our two instruments. So we're going to have Z3 and Z4. So that's going to be our first stage regression. But the idea with this sort of first stage regression is then what we do is we take the estimated values of each of these parameters and we use them to predict X1. So we say that we call that X1 hat. So that's the first of our first stage regressions. That's the first of our reduced form equations. The second reduced form equation is exactly analogous. So we just have x2 is equal to gamma naught plus gamma 1 times z1 plus gamma 2 times z2. And we just, in exactly the same form as we do above, we just have, as our final two variables, we have our particular instrument z3 and z4. And as with the above regression, what we do is we then take the expected values or we take the estimated values rather of these parameters and we use them to help us predict x2. So we call that x2 hat. So that those, both of these two regressions define our first stage regression when we have multiple explanatory variables. The second stage is much easier. It's just exactly the same form as we had um, previously when we, when we only had one explanatory endogenous variable. We just have a regression of y on, instead of x1, we replace this with x1 hat. Then we replace x2 by x2 hat. And we also include our variables z1 and z2 in this regression, where z1 and z2 are exogenous. And it turns out under these circumstances, as in opposition to least squares, beta1 hat and beta2 hat as obtained from this whole sort of procedure here, which we define as two stage least squares, turn out to be consistent estimators of the true parameters beta one and beta two. And notice that in estimating this, I required that the number of exogenous instruments, those are variables which are exogenous and they are excluded from the structural equation, which is this, which is this equation, I required that that number of exogenous instrumental variables be at least as large as the number of endogenous variables. And this is actually encapsulated in something which is known as the order condition, which says that the number of excluded exogenous variables, which we call instruments, must be at least as big as the number of endogenous variables within our regression. Because if it isn't, then we can't actually estimate it via two stage least squares. And it goes without saying that in each of these sort of regressions or each of these first stage regressions, we require that either it is the case that delta three doesn't equal zero or delta four doesn't equal zero. 
or that's in the first one, and then in the second one we require that gamma 3 doesn't equal 0 or gamma 4 doesn't equal 0. So that means we can't just add arbitrary rubbish to our model, we actually have to add something which is actually doing some explaining of x1 or x2.